Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed, blessed be God's, God's kingdom, kingdom now, now and, and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. be with you and also, and also with, with you. you let us pray oh God you've caused this holy night to shine with the brightness of the true light grant that we who have known the mystery of that light on earth may also enjoy him perfectly in heaven where with you in the Holy Spirit he lives and reigns one God in glory everlasting Amen. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. 
Those who lived in the land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you, as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually and there shall be endless peace. For the throne of David and his kingdom, he will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
reading from Titus. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all, training us to announce impiety and worldly passion, and in the present age to live lives that are self-controlled, upright, and godly, while we wait for the blessed hope and manifestation of the glory of our great God, our Savior, Jesus Christ. He it is who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify for himself a people of his own who are zealous for good deeds. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord, Lord Christ. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. 
all went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. <clears throat> then an angel of the Lord stood before them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David, a savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. I was listening to the news the other day and the person, uh, the commentator said, 2020, it can't be gone soon enough. And I know we always, uh, all of us feel the same way from the pandemic to um, all the sickness and illness and lockdowns and everything else. It's, it's, been, it's been the strangest of years for everybody. And I've so looked forward to Christmas uh, as I'm sure all of us have. But as I begin to look at the Christmas story, the passage from Luke that, that Janice just read, um, as much as I love that, as much as it holds a dear, dear place in my heart, my memory, and uh, growing up as a child and everything, uh, to be honest with you, that passage just did not hold me. Um, I found that that passage couldn't nurture me beyond the moment in time when I heard it. And I realized I needed something more this Christmas, that I personally needed something more than just that story. As beautiful and lovely and as sentimental and as perfect as it is, I needed something more. And so I looked at the other lessons. I really, one of the few times I've ever done that since I've been a priest. Um, and my heart and my mind and my everything kept going back to Titus. A little background on Paul's letter to Titus. Titus was one of his colleagues, one of the leaders in the early church. And Paul, as he says in the letter, I left you in Crete to put things in order. Um, the church in Crete that Titus was in charge of was a mess. Paul spends the first couple of chapters of, of Titus really denigrating the people of Crete. And um, 
I guess because he doesn't want to be the one that says bad things about him. He says, even your philosophers say, and I want to quote this, I don't get it wrong, that, they, that you are liars, vicious, brutes, and lazy gluttons, detestable and good for nothing. What a bunch of folks. Um, what a bunch of folks those Cretans were. And Paul goes on more to say just how much work is needed there, how much help is needed there. And then he goes in the passage that we just heard read. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all, training us to renounce improprieties and worldly passions in the present age to live lives worthy. That's what I needed. Our world has been in a mess for the nine, last nine months. Well, it's been in a mess forever, really, hasn't it? Um, and the way the people of Crete are described by Paul is not unlike the way someone would describe us right now. Um, in so many ways, so many of us uh, have been good for nothing. So the Christmas story, as beautiful as it is, I need more than that. What I need is to know what Paul says to Titus. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all. And the grace of God is Jesus. In the prologue to John, in John's first chapter, he says, we have received grace upon grace from this Jesus. Now, anybody who's been in Bible study with me knows uh, how much I love that word grace. And I've, uh, a lot of folks can tell me that Greek meaning, uh, how it's translated, the divine influence upon the heart and our response to it. The grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all. God has come in the world through Jesus and has extended grace to everybody. Has given us the influence of God Almighty upon our heart. We have been given that to change our heart. And we've been given an opportunity to respond to that divine influence, which really is love. And what Paul says to Titus, it trains us to live a new life in the age to come. What the grace of God does and what we've been given at Christmas, what came into the world through Jesus is the ability to love each other. Grace upon grace, not just one helping but a double portion of grace to train us to love each other. That is what the gift of Christmas is. Now, with that in our hearts, and with that in our minds, I can go back to that Christmas story. Because those shepherds that first heard about Jesus' birth, that first heard the songs of the angels, they did not know that they were loved. They were on the low end of that socioeconomic system in Palestine. But yet the angels came to them first and said, you need to know this good news because something incredible has just happened. God has been born into the world in this little village of Bethlehem. And I want you to go and I want you to see that. And they do and go, they go there and they see it and they receive grace upon grace. They receive the divine influence upon their heart and they respond to it because what Luke says, they go forth from there singing praises and glorifying God. So, I don't want to turn anybody away from that Christmas story because the Lord knows it's so beautiful and so true. But maybe, maybe just maybe, this year, in 2020, we need grace upon grace. We need to know that the grace of God has been unleashed in the world, bringing salvation to everybody, training us, showing us how to love. Because when all is said and done, what we celebrate each year at Christmas is that the love of God has come into the world. The love of God has come into the world and come into our hearts to show us how we might love. It's a great gift. It's the greatest gift, in fact. But what we're called to do right now especially is open up that gift of love. Open it up, assemble it in however way we want to do it and use it. Use it to love each other. Because we need it. We need it so much here in this place we're in. The passage from Isaiah says, 
The people who walked in darkness have seen a great, great light. On them a light has shone. That great light is the grace and the love of Jesus. And we do not have to walk in darkness any longer. We have the light and the love and the grace of Jesus to guide us forward. Let us open that gift. Let us use that gift. And let us celebrate that we are loved so that we can love each other. Blessings, grace, and peace. And the most merry, wonderful, and glorious Christmas to all. Amen. Let us affirm our faith with the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God, true God, begotten not made. Of one need of the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified by a conscious life. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven. He will come again in glory to judge the living and dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and Son. With the Father and Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has just spoken the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic Mass of all church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the more life of the world will come. Amen. Amen. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let life perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As we celebrate the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ coming to the world to show us his love, may the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also, and also with, with you. you. Peace to everyone peace. out God's there. Peace. Peace. God's peace. peace. God's peace. God's peace. God's peace. One announcement I want to share with everyone who is uh, watching the service tonight. At 7.15, well, let me back up. We will consecrate uh, bread and wine for the Eucharist. And at 7.15, after the service is over, give you enough time to get over here. From 7.15 to 8 o'clock, Michelle and I will be outside in the parking lot to distribute communion uh, for those who would like to have Christmas communion. So please come by 
for that, to make this um, as special of a Christmas celebration as we can do under these circumstances. So we look forward to seeing y'all in just a little bit. Blessings. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right, it is right to give to our thanks, thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because you gave Jesus Christ, your only Son, to be born for us who by the mighty power of the Holy Spirit was made perfect man of the flesh of the Virgin Mary, his mother, so that we might be delivered from the bondage of sin and receive power to become your children. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son, for in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we we proclaim his resurrection, resurrection. we We await await his his coming coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, so that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Our Father, who who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy Thy kingdom kingdom come, come. thy Thy will be done, done, on on earth as as it is in heaven. Give Give us this day our our daily bread, bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass trespass against us. And lead us not not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly, Heavenly Father, Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with the spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God, who sent his Son to take our nature upon him, bless you in this holy season, scatter the darkness of sin, and brighten your heart with the light of his holiness. Amen. May God, who sent his angels to proclaim the glad news of the Savior's birth, fill you with joy and make you heralds of the gospel. Amen. May God, who in the word made flesh, joined heaven to earth and earth to heaven, give you his peace and favor. Amen. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen.
We're so grateful for all of those who gathered together with us to celebrate Christmas Eve Eucharist in this virtual way. After the service at 7.15 until 8 o'clock, Michelle and I will be in the parking lot um, distributing Eucharist to all who would like to be a, receive their Christmas Eucharist uh, this evening. Please come by to receive it and be blessed if you'd rather like to do that as well. Thank you again for joining us. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord.